My name's Dave DeBow, founder of MoneyPartnerFormula.com, and this show is built for everyday real estate investors who are actively doing deals and looking to scale using other people's money. So if you're an active real estate investor and you want to get featured on the show to talk about your own real estate and capital raising experiences, then just go to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now let's get rolling with this episode and remember to subscribe for daily interview content. Hey folks, welcome back. Another great episode. Today, zooming in all the way from Florida, we've got a real estate entrepreneur who's a very, very busy guy and he's done a multitude of different real estate investing strategies. These days, he's focusing more <clears throat> on note investing. So Mr. Ivan Terrero, welcome to Property Profits Podcast. Thank you for having me on, Dave. How are my you pleasure. Doing? Yeah. All right, my friend. So give everybody the 30,000 foot Ivan's story when it comes to you, life, and real estate investing. What got you into all of this in the first place? Well, I guess what got me into real estate was a while back, uh, we're from the Dominican Republic, and my dad had a couple of businesses. And before establishing those businesses, he had bought some land, and he had bought some properties. And in the Dominican? In the Dominican Republic. Okay, yes. very good. Yeah. And he would, we went through some tough times. The businesses failed. And what kept us afloat was the properties that he had. He went selling off uh, one and two and three uh, to keep us afloat so they can get his feet back on the ground. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that showed you from an early age the value of land for sure. Yes. Well, I was in my early, uh, late teens, early 20s when that happened. So mm. it was um, uh, a eye opener. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what at, at what age did you come to the states, Ivan? Well, that's a long story. Well, I came to the states when I was when I was about uh, almost four years old. Okay. And then we moved back when I was fifteen. Okay. Wow. That's yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's got to be wild. That's got to be rough. That's for sure. Would you? It, it was. It was a big cultural change moving from New York City to the Dominican Republic. Most definitely. All right. So then how did you first get started actively investing in real estate yourself? And more, more or less, when did that happen? It happened the year 1996. Uh -huh. I was reading the newspaper and I saw an ad for a lot for sale in Florida. And I answered the ad and the lot was for $4,500, which I thought that's pretty cheap. Uh, I had bought a car recently for around that price. And I said, well, how can I lose? And I bought it uh, sight unseen. Back then we didn't have internet. Um, yeah. I saw the map of the property and I said, I like this one. Can I buy this, this property? And he said, yes. So fast forward, I bought some more lots. And what we did was we built the houses and sold them rent to own. Interesting. Whereabouts in Florida was that? And were you living in Florida at that time or are you still was, in New York? I was still in New York, in Cape Coral. Okay. Okay, keep going. All right. So you're buying lots pretty cheap. Then you're building, well, not even spec houses. You're kind of, some people do build to rent. You were doing build to rent to own. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Nice. And how many of those did you do in about from what time to what time? What time? We period? did six from yeah. 1997 to about 2005. Okay. And it worked out pretty well? It worked out very well. Yes. All right. All in right. hindsight, I would have built uh, the houses and kept them as rentals. Yeah. The rent to own is very, very attractive because theoretically you get higher than market rents and cash flow. But the downside is, because I did rent to own myself for a number of years, Ivan, downside is it's really sad when you actually sell the property because then it's like, ah, I've got no cash flow coming in. Nothing's coming in anymore. Mm -hmm. And then you fast forward 20 years and you realize how much of those properties are worth. And it's like, ah, I hear and you. At the, and at the same time, we help people that didn't qualify for mortgages then to buy their own houses. So, Definitely. No, it's uh, it's a warm fuzzy for sure. But yeah. as an investment, as an investor, I, I call these kind of uh, long-term flips, basically, because you're, you're in and out. It's not in six months. It might be in three years, but... Uh, then you have to go over, go all over, start all over again and do it again from scratch. Yes. Yeah. All right. So you did those. Then where did, so 2005, 2006, that's a couple of years before 
earth shattering changes. What, what did you do after so that? So what happened to me was that in 2005, I bought a house, which was, I was supposed to flip. And this was, we finished the house in October, I remember of 2005, and we were about to sell the house, put it on the market and it didn't sell until mid 2006. Mm -hmm. And then the buyer uh, uh, couldn't get financing and then the bottom fell out. Ooh. So we had to sell that property short sale, which was not a, a pleasant thing to do. No, definitely not. So what happened was that uh, I stopped doing real estate for a while. That made you gun shy for a while. You'd had success. Yes. Success after success after success. Then was that a kind of a bigger deal than you're accustomed to? Did you that was a, that was a much bigger deal? It was a much bigger house. Yeah. So you put a lot of cash into that one and yes, it didn't work out. Exactly. And so for folks that don't forget, don't remember what short sales are, can you give us a brief definition of what is a short sale? So basically we owe more on the mortgage than what the house was worth. Uh -huh. And a short sale was not popular back then. So we had to come up with money out of pocket to sell the house. Oh my God. You had to pay to sell it. Yeah. That yes. really, really sucks. No wonder you're gun shy. So yes. how long did you take off before you got back into active well, real estate investing. It gets better because we had a rental property in Kissimmee and that person stopped paying us for about six months. Yeah. So we had to pay the mortgage for six months. And by the time we were able to get that person out, that person had, um, she had destroyed the property. Basically it was around $12,000 in 2006 uh, money. And we had to fix the property and then sell it. So, so another massive hit. Yes, another massive hit. Wow. All right. No wonder you're gun shy. So when did you get back in and what did you start doing after that? So my brother's an accountant and he had some clients that needed money. And they, again, recent uh, new immigrants, they were owners of bodegas in New York, New Jersey area. Mm -hmm. And they were looking for money and he knew that I had some money set aside. And he vetted them for me. So basically, I became a lender of last resort. So that gave me good returns while the money was safe. A, a with... Lender of last resort, a.k.a. loan shark. <laughs> well, I wasn't a loan shark. No, I wasn't charging them 20%. Okay. But uh, a hard money was, lender. Let's put it a that A hard way. money lender. Exactly. Got it. Exactly. Yeah. So that helped my, um, helped my cash flow, helped my bottom line. Uh-huh. And I decided to get back into real estate because um, of the stock market. I had been investing in the stock market and I had lost some money uh, back then. Mm -hmm. So again, I was um, bitten by the stock market returns and I uh, was trading options, uh, buying and selling uh, puts and calls. Then, very, very risky stuff for sure. Yeah. Risky stuff. And the riskiest part was I thought I knew what I was doing. Yeah. And I didn't have proper stops on my on my uh, options and calls. So basically, the the bottom can fall out, and you can lose way, way, way more than what you put in. It's it's yeah, it's very, very leveraged investments. Yes, exactly. All right, so so, when, you, so you got bit by that, and then you decided to get back into into real estate. But based on your previous experience doing the flips or the flip that didn't work out. What did you decide to focus on when you got back in? Well, I decided to buy some tax liens and tax deeds. Okay, yeah. And that worked out. Then I said, well, this is this is um this is working. And I decided to branch into buying a buy and hold. Okay. So that worked. And all and in Florida, because I know tax all liens all very, in very popular. Yeah. Okay. All so in Florida. sticking exactly. close to sticking close to home. Did you buy the buy and hold via a tax lien or a tax deed or just traditional? Just traditional. Okay. Just traditional. So when abouts was that that you started doing the tax liens and deeds? What year? That was in 2010. Okay. All right. Very good. Mm -hmm. Now that's a nice, typically a nice steady eddy kind of return. Then you bought the buy and hold. So you're getting back into being a landlord. Uh -huh. And then, and then when I, did things progress? I, I sold one of the properties and then I went back to land. Mm. I started buying tax deeds on lands and tax certificates on land. And not, not, not too many tenant hassles when you just buy land, right? Exactly, exactly. And I bought one piece of property out in Nevada. I bought some dirt. It was in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And I sold that for a nice profit. 
So you kind of got into land flipping. Yes. Yes. Okay. Nice. So then land flipping became popular. So that, those deals kind of dried up, at least in, in my experience. And I bought another, I was in contact with another person in Georgia. And I decided to try my hand in doing a flip. Now, and doing meantime, another flip. Yes. I was, I was also doing um, um, lending as a, as a private money lender. Mm -hmm. So I decided to get into the, this flip, this long distance flip. Uh, it was as a, as the active partner or as the money partner for somebody else? Both. I put in my own money and I was supposed to get a percentage of the, uh, of the equity once the, the deal was, was done. So as, as just about anything, you know, I, I didn't vet the operator that well, even though um, I checked his website, I checked his references. Um, he had, uh, he had done, I, I think six or seven flips. He was actually referred to me by someone who used to work for me in New York. Hmm. So long story short, uh, I lost my shirt on that, on that investment. Yeah. So, so at the end of the year, I, you know, added my pluses and minuses and I saw that I was making more money with less hassles, uh, doing notes. Yeah, definitely doing, doing mm -hmm. notes or doing the tax liens, tax deeds. When you say notes, what do you mean? I was, I was basically a hard, uh, uh private money lender, uh, private money lender. Okay. Yeah. Originating notes mm -hmm. and, and buying and selling notes. Yes. All right. So is that what you decided to keep focusing on? Yes. So you've been yes. doing that pretty exclusively for how long now, Ivan? It's been three and a half years. Nice. Years. Nice. Yes. Yes. And is this what you're planning to continue to do? Well, you know, I'm kind of adventurous. I, I do I do love we notes. can tell. Yes. <laughs> we can tell you're not you're not scared to try and do stuff, that's for sure. Well, you know, it doesn't matter how many times you fall, all that matters is how many times you pick up you pick yourself up and, and move on. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you what are you looking at getting into now? Well, I bought a small mobile home park earlier this year. Ah, that's right. Yes, we were talking about that offline before. Yeah, that then house. I know that's a very popular asset class. How's that one working so out? So far, so far, so good. And that's what got me into into the mobile home parks is that I I uh, bought a mobile home here in Florida, and got it very cheaply, and I rented it out. And then the actual tenant wanted me to sell, wanted to buy the property from me. So I originated a note on the property, and that person paid me on time until the note was due. Mm -hmm. And that brought up other opportunities to buy other mobile homes and sell them on, on financing. Right, right. Yeah, no, that's very attractive. So yeah. did you say that you bought a whole mobile home park now? I bought or a whole you... mobile home park, yes. So how many how many pads or how many rentals are in that park? It has room for 18. Right now, there are 10 uh, pads there. Okay, well, that's good. You got room to almost double that yes. when, whenever you want to. And yeah. the mobile home park was actually mismanaged. And mm -hmm. strangely enough, um, I was speaking with my mentor um, in the note business, and he mm -hmm. told me about this mobile home park that wasn't performing. And I asked him, so tell me more about this. And he did. And I took a site visit. I met actually the owner. I met the tenants. So I spent more time doing my due diligence with this deal than other deals. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. So where do you see things going? Well, hey, let's back up for a second here, Ivan. Mm -hmm. So some po folks might be familiar with private lending, hard money lending, mm -hmm. originating notes. Other people aren't. So maybe if you could just give us a big picture overview of, of what does your note business look like? What's the what's the normal kind of a project that you're lending on? What's the term? Like how long are these loans? How are you secured? What kind of uh, returns are you, are you able to get with these kind of notes? So if you don't mind sharing a little bit about sure. that, just let me tell you about, you know. about the, the notes I've been doing on, on mobile homes. Okay, perfect. So basically we, we purchase a, mo a mobile home. Or how much, for example, it all depends on the area and the condition of the mobile homes. Uh, before we used to pick them up very cheaply. Now they're more expensive, just like anything else. So let's say, say maybe a more up-to-date example of a deal. I'd say about 20000 Okay, so you buy a mobile home mm -hmm. in a mobile home park for twenty grand. Got mm -hmm. it. So what we do is we renovate it, bring it up to, to the standards, rentable standards, and we find a tenant. 
So and what? So you put another maybe five, ten grand into renovating it, yes, or less? five or ten grand, depending on, on on the condition. So let's say you're all in for thirty, just you know, just plus yes. you've had to you've had to spend a a few months paying the pad rent on that and insurance and all that kind of stuff. You got some holding costs involved with that. So yes, yes, yeah. Excuse me. Excuse me. So what we do is we find a tenant mm -hmm. and we create a note. The usual note length is three years. In some instances, it's five years. Because it's a mobile home, it's not a a, a, a house per se. It's right. considered a vehicle, personal property. Mm -hmm. Most people cannot get a loan on a Traditional home. bank financing for this guy. Exactly. Kind of, a mortgage exactly. for Exactly. Like better so day. that's where I come in. And what it does, it helps us provide a affordable housing for someone who may be uh, maybe gets paid in cash or yeah. doesn't have steady income. So what we do is we vet each tenant before offering them um, this this product. Well, you know what? That brings in a lot of your experience from back in the old rent own days. Yes, similar kind of similar kind of tenant profile or buyer profile. So give me give me an idea. You've got a thirty thousand. You got thirty thousand into this property. You're selling it via a note. You're holding the for lack of a better term, you're holding the mortgage. We're holding you're holding the, the loan on this on this property. Yes. Five year term, you said. Five year, you, three to five years, depending on the value of the home. So, if what would the the value be on like a thirty thousand dollar mobile? What would you again, be selling? It depends on the area. It's usually anywhere between fifty to seventy thousand. Yeah. Okay. So let's say it was sixty, just to pick one in the middle. So you're right. you're basically doubling your money in five years on this exactly on this small little. Property and smaller. So what we do is we require a ten percent down mm -hmm. from the from the tenant buyer, and the interest rate varies anywhere between ten to fourteen percent. Wow. Okay. Depending on the area. Right. And with that, are they have they paid you out at the end of the term, or is there still money owing typically at the end of the term? So far, so good. They have paid me out, and that's okay, what we yeah. want. We want a yeah. satisfied uh, uh, tenant buyer. And again, I don't want to be an owner of a of a home mm -hmm. that uh, I'm not. I have no intention of, of living in. Mm -hmm. So it's a win win for for uh, the tenant buyer. And it's a win win for us. No, that makes a lot of sense. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for kind of explaining how that works. Now, is that your primary focus, or or are you doing other kind of hard money loans as well? That has been my primary focus because, again, for me, it's very satisfying providing stable, affordable housing. Uh, for this for this segment of the population yeah and because most people don't want to live in apartments they want to have someone on top of them next to them or below them it's more like their own home and yeah they've got I've a yard they, they have they a yard place, yes yeah they have a place to park mm -hmm. yeah no that that makes a lot of sense ivan fantastic and now you've purchased uh your first small mobile home park with room to expand where where do you see yourself going over the next year or two ivan but I think we're looking, I'm going to start looking at more mobile home parks. Yeah. I think it's a niche that is is uh, underserved because there's a, there are a lot of uh, mismanaged mobile home parks. There are people that get into the this space not knowing what um, what to look for or how to manage them. Right. So that's that's my niche. And I want to expand the note business. Expand the note business. Yes. Focusing on mobile homes or? Focus like... on, on the, the, my main focus will be on mobile homes and uh, I, we've established, I've established relationships with hedge funds and banks to buy their notes at a discount. Ah, they're no, okay. Notes on mobile homes or notes in general? Notes in general, notes okay. on, on homes. Very good. All right. So you're kind of diversifying there. Kind of a nice way to double dip if you wanted to as well. You could own the mobile home park and also do owner financing on the yes. mobile homes that are in your own park. That's yes. Yes. That's a pretty sweet situation to get set up yes. with. Makes sense, Ivan. Well, that's fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, I, I think that's that you you've taken the licks over the years, you've taken the the bruises and the punches and whatnot, but you didn't stay down for very long. You got back up, tried it again, didn't always work out, but you when once you found something that really kind of resonated with you and also kind of tugged at your your heartstrings a bit like 
you're, you're able to do well by, and at the same time help people who otherwise couldn't get into their own home. So it's a, it is really a win-win kind of scenario. Uh, it's, it's just really created a nice real estate investing business for yourself. Plus, I don't have to deal with tenants and toilets. I don't have to f- deal with contractors who are late. I don't have to deal with the rising costs of, of lumber and, and, and nails and, and baseboards and all that wonderful stuff. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Ivan, this is this is great. Congratulations. And if people Thank want you. to connect with you and find out more, what should they do? Well, I'm on Facebook and I'm also on LinkedIn. So you can reach me there. Um, I have a website that's called thenotedoctor.com. And you can reach me there at uh, info at thenotedoctor.com. Beautiful. Well, Ivan, thanks very much for being on the show. Oh, thank you, Dave. It's a pleasure. All right, everybody, take care. And we will talk to you on the next episode. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And as always, if you want to listen to more daily interview content, make sure you subscribe. And if you're an active real estate investor and you're doing deals and you'd like to get featured on this show, then just head over to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now at MoneyPartnerFormula.com, we help real estate investors to create a process for predictably getting capital so they can do more deals without relying on hard money lenders or the banks. We do this by building them a private capital marketing system. Now, if you want help turning yourself into a big money capital attraction machine, then book a call with our team to see how we can help. Just visit moneypartnerformula.com to find out more. All right, take care and we'll see you on the next interview.